champion, Fulton As we kick off IWC's combat in Clearfield 6, it is March 1st, 2014. My name is Joe Zimbrowski, as you heard from Pedro DeLuca. I will be joined momentarily by the IWC champion, the era of the Peacock, in full effect with Dalton Castle. Clearfield, Pennsylvania. How's everybody doing tonight? Wow, I was not expecting that kind of noise from you. Because uh, earlier there's a bunch of people talking and boring the hell out of you, huh? Pedro. You leave Pedro alone, sir. He's a very nice man. He's doing a great job out here. All right, my name is Dalton, and I am proud to be back here for the 10th Clearfield Show for IWC. And I know you know that's, that's the number, because it's been said... Ten times, as many times as I've said. And I want to know if you guys are ready for tonight's show. Yeah! Are you ready to see some, some action? Yeah! Are you ready to see me kick somebody's butt late at night? Yeah! Are you sick of people talking and boring you? Yeah! you want to see somebody's face get mashed in? Yeah! Instead of for one fall, your referee, Jake Cummins. As we officially welcome Dalton Castle, YWC champion to the commentary table, Vegas Luka. Nobody said so much and said nothing at all that I just did. Nobody. Young veteran Sebastian, hometown hero, name in the area, is set to kick us off in what uh, you said it called the 10th Clearfield event. Here at IWC, we've had some cataclysms, we've had some combats, and it all brings us right here tonight, March 1st, 2014. And I know the Sebastian College personally, my first Orthodox music for a very orthodox individual. The goggles enthusiast Andrew Palace made history when he became the first man this year to qualify. Wait, wait a second. Ladies and gentlemen, please let me introduce to you the first qualifier for Super Indy 13, Andrew Pallas! Andrew Pallas can get to my point before I can, and he's still on Did you up. people hear that? No, the bad. first qualifier for Super Indy 13 is... Andrew Palace, for those unaware, and uh, if anyone has been uh, lucky enough to avoid Andrew Palace uh, over the past number of weeks, he has a chance to return his enemy. Andrew Palace has not shut up about the fact that he has been the first man to qualify for Super 2013, which is taking place this summer, and he's going to tell Sebastian exclusively in case Sebastian wasn't paying attention. Is he certainly. Um, oh! Run your mouth a little too long, Sebastian. So Close it for you. Stop that! Palace has one weakness, it's his lack of focus. Yeah, and pleading with you at your mouth to have Sebastian stop and some answering back the shots of your own. That's a good point as well. Extending drop kick by Sebastian. We've seen Sebastian in some very physical wars here at Clearfield. You mentioned your history with him. Certainly as well, Sebastian made a most of my for a series of three matches with Silver Head Tie. Did you see the light on that? Andrew was at least 30 feet in. 30 feet? I'm not really good with numbers or guessing, but that was a round for that. Sebastian trying to drop the legs. Palace supposed to be outside, but Sebastian defeated Hentai in a very physical ladder match from a number of years ago. Certainly something that 
his hometown crowd yeah. football yeah. tonight. Yeah. That's the best team. He thinks Sebastian's head will not be coming in the and just go He seems to want to use outside objects no matter what. He's going to crush this boy. He may. There's a steel guardrail waiting out yeah. on the palace. Went to drop down, but later. Strong lats, oh, but not a strong oh, brain on that angle. Oh, he made it on his brains. <laughs> you and I have very different opinions on what the anatomy is. Tailbone first, it's a bastard swings through. Fancy nice move. Sebastian looking to get himself back in the title contention. We've seen him contest with the Super Indy Champions two. here in uh, years prior. Three. Three. I'm just judging on the shorts he's wearing. He looks like some sort of Rocky fighter. Rocky fighter? Yeah, that's, a, that's how I that's how I call boxers. Okay. You know that Rocky fighter? Yeah. 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 Pack here. Oh, pick up Phallus! Waited as Sebastian took a hard tumble in that guardrail that Sebastian previously tried to use on Palace. You see, I, I said Andrew would make mistakes by, by trying to reason with Andrew or with uh, Sebastian. Sebastian. He's take his eyes off. Certainly have to quickly, as, as Sebastian hits the steel, congratulate you, Dalt, on a hard fought title victory a week ago at New Era 2014, where he defeated the six foot seven. Overestimating John McChesney, but Luke Gale is what a big individual. The power that it took you to gut wrench to a deadlift German suplex. Listen, I try hard as well every single day. And uh, I, 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 knew, I knew I could also do something like that. I'm happy I had the strength to pick him up. I don't know where it came from, but sometimes I dig deep and I can, I can muster up some real. Real sturdy uh, strength. Is that a, that's a phrase, right? People say that sturdy strength. I think you may have to touch that. Two count. Andrew Palace. And, you know, some people may call your victory a new count an upset, but you're talking about upsets. Andrew Palace's victory to get into Super Indy 13 ended up being voted as Palace gets a couple of two. Voted by our fans one of the most memorable moments of 2013. Palace defeated. Matt Slyker, one on one, that's not easy to do. It isn't easy to do, but uh, I do want to point out Matt Stryker is substantially smaller than Luke Gallows. Just the uh, matter. Andrew laying in some, uh, some tight shoulders. Could make his career this year in Super Indy 15 back there. Home base the good time sports center in Elizabeth. So more qualified matchups and invitations in a month ahead at house. As you saw, he wasted a lot of time after laying in that big drop kick, putting putting Sebastian on his back where he could get a count. And, and I think that gave him enough time to recover. Andrew uh, arguably so has the it? most long-term so potential close. out of any of the angles that he has to do What does long-term potential mean? It means that, well, if Sebastian traps the shoulders. Is that a, that's not, not being dirty. No, I, that means over the course of his career, he can develop into a big money player. Uh, we were in different levels. No. Well, it could be a turns out you are for you. And I hope they keep it. And how is going to be a future title contender for you? Now, who knows? Well, you know, I mean, I, like I said in the past, anybody's willing. Oh, there we go. Smart move by Sebastian moving out of the way. Coming in with the low blows. Sebastian mounting the offense here. Bringing this together. You like to bring that foot up to the place, huh? And Palace is really Sebastian has momentum back on his side. But uh, yeah, Palace he has all that potential, all that ability. Yeah. He just lacks the focus sometimes. Fisherman suplex. Could have him here. Beautiful bridge, but no. I just want to point out Sebastian says, let's end this. So he was really he was, he was counting on that over the way. Alright, man. End it, baby. You see a guy with a big fluffy head like that, you don't think much, but I'm gonna marry you, Andrew. Tough guy. Yeah. Oh, taste fashion notwithstanding, neck breaker nicely done. Palace. Wasting no time, he's learned in the past. Palace got the leg drop on the 
third attempt he's gone for this matchup. I mean, we know what he's doing here. I'll go for the goggles. Go for those goggles, make himself look like a kitty cat. I'm not sure how Kyle's perceives the world through those goggles. If you, uh, I'll tell you how he perceives them. Perfect. If you ask Justin, uh, Justin Plummer, it's kind of like a 1960s acid trip. Palace going way upstairs though. He has no clue Sebastian's already on his feet. And you want to talk about cat-like agility? We're starting this show off right here, huh? Sebastian connects and both men are down. Could be a turning point in this matchup for both these athletes. I think we, I think this is it. I think we're gonna get the ten and move on to the next match. I'm not so sure about that. Uh, how do you, how do you look at it? The boys both fell from the top rope. They're clearly hurt. Sebastian, Sebastian, he did get that cover roll. Well, I guess it's life in both of them. I know Palos has the uh, daunting task of having to complete this matchup with his goggles on. Yeah, he's like one of those race horses that can't see left or right. All he can see is forward, so he better be looking in Sebastian's direction. Alice would love to get some Oh, there we go. We're removing all the goggles. Oh, oh come on. This Alice. ref is not being smart. Alice sneaks in a low blow. What's this ref's name today? Is it Jeff? It's Jake Clemens. Are you sure it's not Jeff Clemens? And wait, here's Paul. Sebastian kicks out. Keep in mind, Palace's ego is bravado. Paul's to match a week ago against the handicapped hero Gregory Iron. Palace looking to turn that momentum around this time. Can you see him? Grab his goggles on. Sebastian. That's why you oil up, boys and girls. Stunting the momentum and turning Palace over. Submission here. Sharpshooter, Scorpion by any name. The Palace hail. Oh, check it out how tight Sebastian cinched in there. Yeah, he looked like he was going to give it up, but he fell right in it. Cinched up tighter. Hometown boy gets the victory over Andrew Palace, and following the biggest win of Palace's career, he drops two straight, Gregory Iron and then Sebastian. What will Andrew Palace do to recover his momentum on his long road? First man qualified, but the whole field still to come. Super Indy 13 coming this summer. This man is six feet four inches tall, at least 275 pounds of solid muscle. Rex Wallace is gargantuan, and he was hired by John McChesney to be the bodyguard of Team Big League about a year ago. A serious injury kept Lawless on the shelf for many months, but McChesney kept Lawless waiting in the wings, and as soon as McChesney needed his service again, Lawless reappeared. That happened to be a week ago at a new era, and the victims happened to be Jimmy Nuts and Al Snow. More on that in a moment as we meet the opponent of Rex Wallace. Across the ring. I think Bronco maybe had a salty move. 
But uh, Bronco's a tough guy. We've seen him, uh, in addition to his normal tag team partner, been on the slaughterhouse for a number of months. Uh, Bronco. Hey, oh, look at here. It was almost a little yeah, match. Look at that Rex obviously yeah. pushing him back in the corner, but not easy. Bronco, he does not necessarily have a... Uh, 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 I am not saying that. I'm saying that uh, looks can be You're saying he's in shape, just not. Not the traditional way you would expect someone who's in So he definitely, there's a shape to him. Yes. And he's quite powerful. Beneath that yeah. shape is what I'm getting at. Threw some bunches in there enough to yeah. slow it on Rex, but uh, let's see what happens here. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, there's my, maybe not the momentum behind that. Lawless, it feels like Rex Lawless right to you. That's an outrunning Rex Lawless. What's his name? Rex Lawless. First day with a new tongue. Yeah. Just charge the corner. Marco's got to use his speed. Marco is He's also a deceptive flyer. He's very agile for his uh, burly, compact physique. on the fact, Dalton, that Justin LaBar is ringside with Rex Lawless. Do you think Bronco's hungry after eating that boot? It's probably full, right? <laughs> Justin LaBar has been loosely vaguely associated with Team Big League for many months. Many speculate as the main catalyst for Team Big League's implosion. It's saw Will Connors and Jimmy Nuts separate from that pack. And uh, with McChesney not here, he was suspended for a locker room attack on Justin Eichel. Listen, I can't, I can't help but to wish the best for every member of Team Big League. I mean, they've been nothing but charming individuals to me, to Ida, who's seen everybody in their path. They are, uh, for, a, for a lack of better words, just balls of trash. And, and, and I, I'm really hoping my man Bobo in there can muster up his strength. What did I say earlier? Strength. <laughs> to really, I don't know, put Rex back on the shelf. I wouldn't mind. Although, I wouldn't mind a, a matchup against Rex Wallace. I think I could run through him. Well, we saw you uh, certainly refuse to back down from Luke Gallows and uh, Rex Wallace. You know, look at the people of Clearfield getting behind Bronco here. If anybody can match physicality with a guy like Luke Gallows, it's certainly Rex Wallace, who we see compete against two men at a time here. Look at the strength of that boy. Oh! Follow a slam Bronco sent halfway across the ring. Could wrap this up. No. I ain't gonna get you fired. Jeff Clemens. That's it. Oh. Always has a scowl on his face. He's here to do a job. He's here to carry out a mission. That's whatever John McChesney says. But you can see Bronco a step quicker as we mentioned a moment ago. Bronco, what is Bronco doing up? You gotta get some, yeah. Well, I like what he's doing here. Good Making strategy. an inertia work to his favor. There you go, could have him. Oh, Bronco using his weight as an offensive weapon. But not enough in that exchange. Innovative full nail slam. Rubber, could have him. Oh, yeah. Rex doesn't want to win. Rex making the decision. Very See, this is what I was talking about. He's a dumb He's a dumb man. He's got a lot of muscles. He's a big deal. You know, the brain is there. Why would you know him that guy? The unfortunate thing is, though, Dalton, is Justin LaVar, John McChesney, and Victor. They're very tough. So do you think well, LaVar? Could go with LaVar, could almost took this thing. Are you saying LaVar just asked him to not pin him and put some more punishment on him like that? Put a pass me with the ego that Lombard possesses. That's not what I'm saying. Keep in mind, Lawless tore his patella tendon just that big boy up. in and the uh, ring and didn't quit the match. Lawless refused to stop the match. John McChesney had to stop it for him. That move is called the death penalty. That's going to do it. Well, Here is your winner, Brooks Lawless. He's still pulling it off. He can't fall. And with this giant under the tutelage of John McChesney, who certainly still covets that IWC championship that is yours, perhaps this man may be in your future, though. Maybe.
what? Sounds like certainly you are ready for the challenge. It'll be a much different result than the match you just had right now. Rex Lawless back on the winning track. Don McKenzie, not here physically, but certainly when he sees this footage, big smile on his face as he rebuilt Team Big Big smile on his face because he's tough. Outside of this ring. Thank you very much. Relax. We'll use you in the future. Okay? So thank you very much. Last time we were here in Clearfield, Pennsylvania, there was a big match. That's right. There was a big six man. And on the opposite side of you was a gentleman that I personally called to say, hey, look, you want to try to keep these guys in line here tonight to give these two young superstars, graduates of the Iron City Wrestling Academy, by the way, Sam Cassidy, Remy LeBay. These guys deserve a fair opportunity, so I called someone that knows tag teams in IWC, and I called someone who promised me he would keep it fair. Ladies and gentlemen, your special guest referee, Marshall the Bull. Uh -oh. 
interesting choice. The STDs trying to defy the rules. Corey Futuristic and Ginger were indeed barred from ringside as a result of the events of last week. And uh, Chuck Roberts came prepared. Why does he care what you think? This is futuristic. Uh, just to let you know, Chuck barred you and Ginger from the match, right? Ringside. I personally don't have a problem with you staying here. Is that alright with you, Chuck? I don't have a problem with him out here. But I swear to God, if you interfere in this match, I'm gonna break your neck. <laughs> and little Bo I'll take care of you later. No, and do you think that's by design or just by coincidence? I feel like you need to move quickly if you're a referee to get in the spots to see if the shoulder blades are down. Well, that, that is a fact, but uh, I have a feeling Marshall doesn't, doesn't really care if he moves quick enough in this match. No. Marshall's had his issues with just about everybody. Look at this, good sportsmanship right here. Marshall's been on both sides of the ring. Hey! There goes the seagull. He just threw that to a child. He just gave tobacco to a child. He did not. And this matchup starts uh, much not the way the STDs had anticipated. You laid Cassidy out front, so isolated early. Like a cohesive unit, just like our tights. They could be tag team champions by the end of the night. Nice drop toe, Cassidy follow through. Dropping the knee. I feel like when you've got tag team champions like this, I could be tag team champions by the end of the night, just doing commentary. Oh, I don't, I don't know about that. You can't underestimate, much like we talked earlier about underestimating Andrew Palace, the other STD. How about Marshall? being very lenient on the rules of how many guys are allowed in the ring right now. Well, anybody that knows Marshall's history knows he rules have never really gotten along. Not the rules of the ring, not the laws of this country. That sounds like the, the forward to his, like, his album from the 80s. Me and rules don't get along. It was covered by Remy LeVay. Their fall on Jess Flexel. Marshall, part of the most decorated tag team dynasty. And I know they see history, La Mahi's top great over two. And Remy attempted some retribution on the man that pulled the wool over everybody's eyes a week ago with that uh, impromptu bell at the Jess Flexel. And you gotta wonder what impact Ginger and Corey Futuristic have. Chess Flex are asked Remy to tag in Cassidy, right? Am I saying that? And, uh, and he did it. And, and I feel like he could tell Cassidy to just lay down and let him pin him, and he'll let him. No, I don't think so. No, you don't think he's got that kind of control of him? I think Remy realized that was a good idea. Flex had wanted a fresh start, but now he's got to do it with a fresh man. Nice amateur style takedown by Sam Cassidy. The natural, they call them, because of how quickly. Natural what? Well, natural after the natural performer, because of how quickly he picked things up. My wife bought natural rich. peanut butter once. It was disgusting, so it's probably not the best term for somebody to have. Well, we're not going to get back into tasting these apples, are we? Cassidy with a side headlock. Sam Cassidy, a little salty, he looks. Flexer, on the other hand. Flexer cooks eggs in the morning, makes some bacon, and then swabs his hand through the pan after and puts it through his hair. There's a lot of weird things Flexer can do based on that stereo. We won't get into that. Oh, I'm just focusing on the grease in his hair. Though. We had to eat breakfast to get that though. Look at this, we still got two guys in the ring, and Nagawa doesn't seem to care. Do you think he's afraid of the ref? Yeah, I think he is actually. McDowell has been a tag partner and rival of Marshall Bull. And he's a law-abiding citizen over there in the corner. These guys just taking liberties. Something about this makes me think flexible. Well, I, I don't think he's liking this anymore. Marshall's just counting along. He's not counting 
the Nightriders out, as, as uh, Remy and Cassidy are called. He's counting a hole. Listen, I don't question Chuck's decisions a lot, but I don't think this is a fair match when you put Marshall in as the ref. Last week wasn't a fair match. It was technically four on two. Wait, whoa! Hey! Hey, you can't do that! I don't see anybody rushing to tell him not to. Here comes Brian McDowell telling him not to. Big kingpin. He's never bowled less than Hey, that's not your opponent anymore. Your opponent's in the stretch, buddy. I wonder if he's bowled more than 300 in that That'd be impressive, eh? Right? Score 350. Nice suplex. The man that was too aggressive that's for the bowling war is Kingpin and Scott. It's a non-contact sport, I hear. Well, it's supposed to be. Beautiful. What do you think that wrist guard does? Putting it to Texas Red. What are you talking about? I meant when. <laughs> but do you think it adds a little more, a little more leverage when you strike somebody? It wouldn't surprise me to see Kingpin uh, put a little Smart piece of metal in there as well. Oh, nice drop kick. Tag. There doesn't seem to be any rules in this match. These young kids are, are showing me something here. Yeah, what, what are they showing you? Yeah. They're showing me some Ryan McDowell was the strength. Belly to belly. Bowling not really popular. Yeah, he field. just picked Sam Cassidy at least 30 feet in the air. What? Something like that. Still working on that map. How tall do you think he is? Bowling fans in this crowd here. Not in the least. Diverse chin lock. Puts off the blood supply to the brain via the carotid artery. That blood out there to transport the oxygen. The lights go out quickly. Cassidy and his team. Oh, we've seen this before. That's called the bowler bomb. So you slam him down and then you cuddle him real hard. <laughs> I can't see what's going on. Oh, he's got a real tight grip around the waist. That's a reverse bear hug. And also known as a gut wrench in the wrestling world. There you go. With the, uh, the, the mass and the power that Kingpin possesses, it's certainly going to do its share of damage. When you can't expand your lungs, especially after just a fast-paced physical contest, that wears you out quick. That's why I always keep an extra lung in my back pocket. I see. Somewhere where the guys don't know where it is. Cassidy trying to fight his way free. I don't see Flex is trying to rally the crowd here, and I don't think he's doing anybody any favors. And Flex are cut one for his trouble. Got a touchy right to the back of the head. Nice yeah, uppercut. I wasn't okay uppercut. Did a lot of damage it appears. And Cassidy got the big man up for us. He picked him at least 30 feet in the air. Flashbacks to Bobby Heenan seeing the Giant Gonzalez. Cassidy looking for the tag of Remy LeVay. He looks ready. And Remy's pumped up. He wants a piece of ball. Uh, I don't want to be the guy on the receiving end of Remy's armband when he gets tagged in. Remy, and here comes Fluxer as well. Two yeah, fresh men. thinking. Right the buckle. And the Knight Riders take control. <laughs> oh, that, numbers game will catch, that numbers game will catch up with you eventually. Yeah, you know what else will catch up with you? Foot to the face. Remy I mean, uses momentum, drops the feet into the both edge midsection. The smart boy there, he knows his surroundings. And the tag titles are at stake. You guys have a shot. So you can't sit in there. Cassidy, I think uh, folks will need to get involved because uh, you have STDs all over the place. Kingpin gets it. Take it down! Did you see that man jump off the apron like a flying squirrel? Look at the clothesline. Ruby with a takedown. But does he have enough in him to get the cover? Tech titles at stake. But poor futuristic. What in the world is he trying to do? What is this guy doing? What is Mari doing? Flex 
Lesnar has one of the championship title belts. And oh, Marshall got it. Well, that's what you get, I guess, when you take out his friend. Flexer inadvertently striking Marshall. And now the Knight Riders. I don't know who I like in this match. I like that. Double atomic drop. I like that. A double flatline and a follow through. Great double team. Is this going to do them a lot of good to make the car? They should just keep putting the boots to them. They don't have anybody to make the count. I'm not sure they realize what happened. Look at Brian, Brian McDowell here. Look at Brian McDowell. What's he got? He's got, he got that heavy. He's got that 20 pound orb. An orb. That bowling ball. Play right for the head. Is that what a bowling ball is? He just hit him with it. Surroundings. Well, know yourself. You don't need to do that. He's going to use that. He just picked up that thing. And Kingpin is in prone position. Insert 710 split jump. Oh! No man. Oh my God. No man should handle. Nobody should have that done. Oh him. my God. And flunks it from behind. I'll just drop Remy on the back of his neck. Marshall never saw any of it, and he has no choice but to count the fall. Here are your winners, and still IWC Tag Team Champions, the STDs. Flexer Kingpin with an assist to that bowling ball. I don't know where he got that fancy orb. He got it from his bowling bat. But you can put anything in that, I guess. And Torres Futuristic handing the prizes to the STD. We'll get one by us again, the STD. They stay on top. Did you want me to respond to your STDs on top comment? Well, I'm going to kind of leave it open ended up to you. But there you see, don't even though. What is that thing in his hand? Even though on the belt. Even though on paper these men may look like comic relief, they're very crafty, they're resourceful, they got the job done. Flexor, Ginger, Futuristic, Kingpin. I'll say they bring medieval weapons into battle. And of course the bowling ball itself. Whatever you call it. Get the job done, much to the dismay. Our Marshall Gambino, sexy talented dude, find a way to stay on top of the car. <laughs> Future boy, get out here now! Put him in the match for school! Put him in the match for Pedro, if you have to drag him kicking and screaming, go get Corey Futuristic. This close. Good job. Excuse me, you got Keith Hot. Yeah, you got Keith Hot. You got Keith Hot here tonight, yes. Yeah. Oh, you excited about that? That great. Because guess what? When we come back here in November, you've got this guy, no holds barred. I will say, hands down, one of the hardest working people behind the scenes of IWC. Justin Plummer, the host of IWC's web show. Wearing his active gear tonight. Check out that shirt. IWC Aftershock airs exclusively by way of YouTube on IWCWrestling.com. Now, when you're exclusively on YouTube, that's a good thing, right? Can I get the aftershock on my Roku? Um, you got a shorter cut, I believe you can. 
sure gave us a thumbs up. Don't ask me how to download any apps though, I draw the line there. Alright, Clearfield, are you guys having fun tonight or what? I will tell you right now, we can all hear you in the back. This may be the loudest this building has ever been. So give yourselves a round of applause. Now, for those who don't know me, my name is Justin Plummer, the host and producer of the independent wrestling's hottest web show, IWC Aftershock, which can be found on IWCWrestling.com. But right now, we're going to do a live edition of the show right here in the ring, and my guest at this time, he's been a part of the IWC for two years, but he's making his Clearfield debut, and I talked to him in the back just moments ago. He's just as excited to be here as I am. Ladies and gentlemen, let's put your hands together for Jimmy Nuts! I don't put my hands together for any nuts anyway. Jimmy Nuts was a card-carrying member of Team Big League throughout 2013, but once there was a bit of a battle for power, who was minding the storm between John McChesney, Norm Connors, Justin LaBar involved as well, Jimmy Nuts decided to listen to Norm Connors, saying that Norm had done so much to help him along the way, Nuts showed that loyalty, and as a result, McChesney excommunicated Nuts from Team Big League, and ever since, Jimmy Nuts has been a thorn in John McChesney's side, not only getting involved in McChesney's title match with you, Sir Dalton Castle, or you captured that championship, not only eliminating John McChesney from the bottom row with your title shot last week, but also joining forces with Al Snow. Yeah, yeah, I know, those are really positive things, and it's changing my opinion about him, but I don't think I've fully forgiven nor forgotten where we stood together. All right, Jimmy, welcome to IWC Aftershock, and now, you know what the, you know what question's coming. You know what I gotta start off with? It was just two short months ago that Team Big League attacked you from behind and quote-unquote fired you from Team Big League. This is your first chance to address them publicly. What message would you like to send to John McChesney and Team Big League? There's a lot I'd like to say. <clears throat> Maybe call John McChesney. And I'd love to say I didn't see it coming, but John McChesney has always been a selfish human being. You guys have seen it done here with so Justin Ivey, he's a cheapskate. John did what John always does, and he looked out for himself. What I thought was a brotherhood was a wolf in sheep's clothing. And they counted me out. What they counted on was for me to quit. But they didn't count on me fighting back. Now, this is just official tonight, we can announce it. March 22nd, White OPA, it's Uncivil War. It's going to be Jimmy Nuts versus John McChesney. And he just sent me a text a few minutes ago. He suspended Camp Beer tonight. But he wanted me to tell you, you better bring your A game. I'm confused, my A game? My A game. That's what he told me. Maybe John McChesney has a B game. Maybe he has a C game with all his fame and his limos and his bars and his women. Wrestling's my A game. Yeah. And when I'm done here, when I'm done in this ring, people rely on me. John McChesney, you're gonna get the best Jimmy Nuts you've ever seen. <laughs> All right, now, now, Jimmy, I know you're ready for that match, but we don't want to look ahead because right here tonight, it's gonna be you versus your former tag team partner and team big league member, Joseph Brooks. Whoa, 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 whoa you, whoa. God, you're kidding me. It's time for a reality check, plumber. How fitting, two losers commiserating in a town of losers. I love it. Great poetic justice. Justin Labar with Team Big League. I don't think Shut that up. fired up My nuts is the guy you want to mess with right Labar, now. And as you can see, I am the representation of the true talent of stars. I am currently holding this super entertainment title for my client, RJ City, who would not be caught dead at a place like this. And since IWC Wrestling had the audacity to suspend John McChesney, he called in a personal favor, and I am representing and controlling tonight 
team big league. Who cares? <laughs> so tonight here in Clearfield, it's already one win here for Mr. Lawless. We're gonna have the clean sweep. And Plumber, remember, last time we were here in Clearfield, you got carried out. So would you like history to repeat itself? All right, shut up. <clears throat> Thank you. Enough talking. Labar, I know Plumber can kick your ass. And there's three of you, there's one of me. Watch your mouth, there's kids here. I don't care if there's a hundred of you. Let's get in this ring and let's do it right now. I've got my ass whipped before I can do it again. Jimmy Knox wants to fight. This is unfair. Let's clarify, we're we talking a hundred kids or a hundred adults? Are they all going to try to take him on? It's going to happen, there's four, but it's four on It's four on one, and it came to count club with Dalton Castle just jumped the rail. Dalton Castle skipped the ring. And this looks a little bit more even. Wait a second. Who's this guy? Where did this one come from? He's the champ. What's your name? The champ wears his belt. I'm the champ, stupid. He's not a this ring has been surrounded by Team Big League. It's still four on three, technically. And, and we were in a stand-up. Just like a fish to hide in the water. Battle lines have been thrown here in this fight. So please shut up. Come on! Get in here! The bar in charge of Team Big League, what's he gonna do? Dalton wants to fight, he'll defend his IWC title against Bobby Fish later tonight. It'll be nuts and Brooks one on one. Lawless already competing, but certainly ready for another fight if the uh, situation presents itself. Nuts almost got a hold of Brooks. Team Big League very hesitant. Not that I can blame him. This plan did not certainly have Dalton Castle factored into it. But Labar hatched it. We're Team Big League. We fight on our own terms. We fight when it counts. And right now, we don't want anything to do because we're going to take care of business later tonight. Team Big League backpedaling. Not that I am surprised. Jump Brooks. We're supposed to have a match tonight. Be ready to fight. Jimmy Nuts keeps his words short and sweet. It's all action from here on out. It's Nuts and Brooks. It's Castle and Fitch for the IWC Championship. Still tough. Me. But right now, I've got to focus on Tony Nese. Good God, look at the quadriceps on this kid. Holy the guy's very Christ. much in shape, but certainly, Mr. Fish, I don't think you've counted on Dalton Castle involving himself so soon. We'll get your comment right after the introduction of the Neon Ninja and Aerosol Assassin, Facade, a man who's in body, super in. He is the Neon Ninja, the Aerosol Assassin. 
As we take a look at Massage entrance, Bobby Fish then attempted the numbers game beatdown on Jimmy Nuck. Uh, certainly did not pay dividends. Um, I think you're being awfully presumptuous. I mean, we happen to come out to ringside. That does not necessarily mean that we were trying to gain a numbers advantage or that we intended any physical harm to come to Mr. Nuts. You're assuming. And you know what they say when you assume. Well, sometimes when the likes of Dust and Bar are involved, the assumptions aren't that far off base. But one thing you have to assume with Fasad and with Tony Nese is that these men have fought up this matchup long and hard this year, and perhaps never before, because we win in this matchup. They go on to I don't know if many Super Bowl three. Uh, this April in Meadville, Pennsylvania, has been a CD release and digital download release, and I don't want to see that This winner of this matchup in the Go Hard Old Tony Nese is phenomenal. We'll make headlines worldwide. Uh, yes, I, I, I would have to agree with that to step into the ring with AJ Styles. I mean, that opportunity alone, but you throw all the other uh, accoutrements, if you will, into that equation. Certainly, there is something at stake here as these two men line up. Contrasting styles with the facade, you right, style right. under himself. Yeah. Uh, I, I would say unorthodox. Uh, uh, There's eight of them. You might eight say. Eight of them. Uh, I'm assuming Tony Nese is referring to his dominance. I'm counting a full eight. I mean, he's not joking. He saw it a bit reckless at times, but certainly. Uh, Better accuracy rate than most people I prefer, I mean, Crash and Burn is just simply uh, a game changer. Uh, possibly engine maybe Crash and Burn on some of those things. More times than not. See if I can put a few more cliches into this sentence. Um, it just simply doesn't uh, pay off. Tony Neese, of course, is pretty well. It's an amazing power game. He will out-muscle Fasad during the course of this matchup, but Neese is very deceptively quick and agile as well. I'm going to be honest. I think overall, top to bottom, give me the definition of an athlete. I've got to put, uh, I've got to put the advantage in the court of Tony Neese from top to bottom. Strength, quickness, agility. I mean, the man not only is put together, but when you see him move, there's a certain fluidity within his movement. You can tell he's an athlete who comes from an athletic background. That stuff translates to our sport very, very well. Nothing athletic about his strategy at the moment as he's uh, sort of holding back a little bit, biding his time, facade, no stranger to uh, high risk on the outside. You're, I don't think you're ever safe on facade no matter where you go. Well, that, that, is, uh, that is very true. However, anyone who has uh, considered themselves a sportsman think may disagree with that first statement. Now, what Tony Nese is doing right now, which has everything to do with sport, is strategy. This is strategy, and he's taken Assad out of his game, which is going to allow for Mr. Nice to employ what he, the pacing, what he has planned for tonight. He's going to be at an advantage when he steps back into that ring. This is strategy. It's like taking a person, taking a business partner on a walk, and he doesn't know where you're going, but you do. You're the man with the advantage. Tony Neese is playing more of a game of chess, while Passat is just full throttle, full speed in your face. Exactly. And that's going to be possibly his undoing. Tony Neese with a 500 pound deadlift, 550 pound squat, 500 pound leg press. And those are statistics you don't see that often anywhere. In professional wrestling. Very true. Very true. As you mentioned, not just a one trick pony. Some people become as strong and powerful as they can, and they make their living off of that power. Tony needs a lot more versatile. He can fly, he can mat wrestle, and so he can have a He's one of the select two that's been blessed with all of the above. Dragon Gate promotion in Japan, of course, these competing for Dragon Gate USA.
USA here stateside, who's had a number of successful victories. But it's Fassad now showing uh, he can ground a man as well. Fassad is known for his high risk, but certainly you have to have that foundation as well. You have to, you have to know the basics and the fundamentals before you can start to win. Pony, you like that cliche, huh? Yeah. And I'll tell you this, um, those two men have a very storied history. It was Hassan who upended Tony Nese in the finals of Super Indy 12 to recapture the Super Indy championship. I'll tell you what, I give you credit, you do your homework. Hassan bringing up neck muscles, nicely done with a takeover. Hassan looking to quicken the pace, smart strategy. When Nice being struck from all sides, it's much harder to repair. Oh, 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 Certainly impressive. Now Nice back on the defensive. Maybe not by choice, maybe by uh, by necessity. As successful as he is right now, I have a feeling that his undoing is gonna be one of those very moves. And to my point there, Nice not safe on the outside. Not safe on the outside, but I'll tell you what. Facade by going to the outside has not only risked being counted out, but he has also up the risk factor because on the floor, Nice has put a bit more at his disposal to, uh, to certainly take it to Facade. If one could make the same argument about Facade, however, Facade broke the count a moment ago. Nice begging off but not working. How do you think each of these men's styles would contrast against AJ Styles? Uh, well, I mean, AJ Styles is certainly no stranger to the, uh, the top rope, to the high risk of uh, the facade, and he's going to go that route. Two! Can he match him to move that style of the guy as a traveler and talented as AJ Styles? I certainly don't know. Quickly in the cover for two. Neither man has ever if, if, if it comes to Tony Nese, personally, I think he's gonna, uh, I think his, his best advantage would be to cut AJ off and uh, ground him down. And use, use power. Uh, use power. Come on, get up. Well, speaking of grounding, you saw Nese do a moment ago there with Facade. On that second time, I forgot to drop hard, man, man on the back of his head as Nice begins to pound away. Nice has been lashing up again. Yeah. Oh my God. Nice's head. Come on, come on, come on, come on, two, three, four. Turning into the proverbial crimson mask. There you go. I can't help myself. Nice job, Sol. As Anthony Nice certainly uh, has to learn to uh, play under pressure, so to speak. Not sure how uh, you Nice is to see his own blood, and that can certainly have an effect on people. It can certainly shake a guy emotionally to see your own blood. Now, uh, from a from a, a tactical standpoint, it really comes down to where that cut is. Now, is it is it gonna run into his eyes, or is it gonna run down the center of his nose? Well, Nice that's really the question. I think Nice realizes he needs to end this matchup as soon as possible before Agreed. blood loss or vision becomes an issue. Agreed. Good point. Keep in mind, talk about AJ Styles' history. AJ himself is a former two-time Super Indy Champion. Won the championship in 2003. Ended Super Hentai's historic 51 week reign with that championship. Captured for the second time in 2004 for the win over Colt Cabana. 
as you bring up AJ Styles, now if you notice, AJ came back recently to Ring of Honor where I happen to be one half of the World Tag Team Champions. Now do you notice that AJ Styles came back to Ring of Honor in a singles capacity? Now, hey, rumor has it is that he sweats Red Dragon and he wants no part of the Tag Team Champions. I'm just putting it out there. That certainly is a debatable point. AJ Styles has faced uh, some of the best in Ring of Honor and certainly independent wrestling in general. Max Simon, Lexi Roderick Strong, Chris Hero, and many others. Jay Lethal. Go in the ring, I'll tell you what, you can add one of these men to that list after they earn the right to face AJ Styles. I'll tell you what, they are giving it everything they've got. Some of that on Julie, but nobody home. Amazing, amazing. Now he's missed that move, and, and unfortunately that's a calculated mistake, but to see a man the size of Anthony Meese pull off maneuvers like that, it, it's, it's impressive to witness. Keep in mind, Nice made this personal a week ago. Nice had sent in a, uh, a video feed. It was broadcasted uh, on the Court Time Sports Center video wall a week ago where Nice had harsh words for Passad. Nice had uh, a warning for Passad. It caused Passad to be distracted and rolled up by RJ City. That may be the reason Passad's not a four time champion. And check out Passad mount the offensive. Those seem to be low blows to me. I mean, my God. God, referee, please. To cover. If you need me to get up from the chair and put on a striped shirt, I'll do the minutes. work that you're refusing to do, my friend. Inverted atomic drop technically affects the tailbone, although that's not to say that uh, some don't take it. The tailbone or the coccyx. Which is a medical term for the tailbone, I should clarify. So I am uh, working on my PhD in uh, medical studies. I quit that class after external occipital protrusions. So I don't know what to tell you. Facade triple jump into a helo. Oh, Jesus Christ. And lands on his feet. Yeah. Say what you want about Facade and his mindset. When he takes flight, it is absolutely breathtaking. Impressive. Very, very impressive. Personally, I don't employ such tactics because the uh, the probability of crash and burn is just way too high. Well, Sasad sprinkled into the heel kick. That's that, uh, another another cover and another near fall. Needs continues to bleed. And now, what's got to play on the psyche of Sasad here is he's using his own body to to not down to put him in a compromising position and when he does when he puts that much effort into something and doesn't get the pin that's got to play on the psyche wait a second Bobby we got an attempt at the Arashikake driver by Passad Misa counted and Passad reverse reversal the Arashikage is that Afghanian the cover in a near fall I believe it's Japanese Facade uh, heavily steep in the Japanese influence. Certainly contrast to how you are, Mr. King. Well, you know, I, I fancy myself a bit of a Japanese linguist, and uh, that's not yet a word that I am familiar with. It's not to say it's not in the uh, lexicon of uh, the language. However, uh, I've yet to come across it. You're very learned to act there, aren't you? I try. Well, listen to this ovation for Facade Cloud. Standing Ninja, and oh, Nice just exposed the I think bone he might of the have knee. Turned the lights out on that one. The bone of the knee has been exposed. And what Passat counters. Uh -oh. Nice combo cover. Passat moving on to AJ. Oh. I'll tell you what, it's going to be such a big night close. in Meadville. Very, very close. April 12th live. It'll be on DVD and digital download courtesy of Silvertron Media. Brett the Hitman Hart will be there. Rick and Scott Steiner will be there. Matt Stryker will be there. Mickey James will be there. Good God, will I be there? <laughs> check your schedule. I do. I gotta check my schedule because if not, I might be buying a ticket. A star-studded IWC event. Some of the best past, present, and future will be on hand. Mickey James, huh? Okay, some decorum, please. Slugfest, center of the ring. These men, they can't stand, but they can still fight. Well, right about now, I'd be seeing the whole time where a little blood loss 
could be playing into things here with, with uh, Anthony Nice. Yeah, nice, you can tell he's wobbly legged. He's not getting the full effect of those blows, but it's picking up now. I don't know what's holding him up. Facade springboard. And there you see, Facade switches direction. Stays a step ahead and connects with Nice on the takedown. And I'll tell you what, these people are with him. They're behind him. Arasha Kage. He calls for it. Nice. Counters. That's power right there. Absolutely. That's that 500 pound deadlift coming into play. Oh, no. You talk I about a just low blow. You talk what about just a happened low there? And that, why did that referee grab Tony Nice? He's supposed to keep his hands to himself. Stop it. Nice manipulating the official. Now Nice. That sunset driver, we've seen Nice win a number of matches like this, and he That's moves on to AJ Styles. That's a wrap. We are now moving on to face AJ Styles on April the 12th, the premier athlete, Tony Nice. Tony Nice gets the victory, first time ever meeting, courtesy of the International Wrestling Cartel. It goes down April 12th at Beanville. Tony Nice, AJ Styles, Bobby Fish, give me a quick scouting report. I gotta tell you what, I don't know how quick anybody in this company needs to be to uh, tangle with one of these two men. Tony Nese comes out on top. Hard fought victory, and I'll tell you, it's because there was so much at stake. That opportunity with AJ Styles, all the other things that were on the line that you mentioned at the beginning of the match. I mean, my God, there's a reason why guys go out and put it on the line like that. Tony Nese cashes in. His one-way ticket to IWC Night of Superstars. Bret Hart, David Hart Smith, Steiner Brothers, Mickey James, Matt Stryker. And now, one of your feature matchups, Tony Nese, in the match of his life with the phenomenal AJ Styles. Don't miss that IWC release. Be there live or catch it on DVD or digital download. Bobby Fish, thank you for joining us. Thank Play you. Still to come, here in Clearfield, Fishing Castle, your feature later tonight. A minute to go. You get a picture with, again, one of the top young up-and-comers here in the IWC. He's, he's a former tag team champion here in the IWC. This is your last opportunity. We're going to get underway very, very quickly. Less than a minute to go. Give me the mic. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, you might want to get to your seats. This man wanted a fight. This is your opportunity. This is your opportunity to see a fight. You're not going to want to miss this. Huh? Huh? Here, take your mic. I'm done with this. Jimmy Nuts. Oh. What's going on around here? Yeah, we, we were planned for this. We, 
This matchup, as a matter of fact, was scheduled a little bit later on tonight. But Nuts and Brooks, specifically Brooks, couldn't wait. And you gotta believe this may have been a plan uh, courtesy of Justin Labar, running Team Big League tonight in the absence of John McChesney. These men were thick as thieves. They were tight as you could be for a number of months until the uh, war for power in Team Big League split them apart. It was Joseph Brooks that sided with John McChesney. Jimmy Nuts, who stayed loyal, the Team Big League's executive consultant, Lord Connors. And these two have been drifting apart ever since. Jimmy Nuts in control. And this has been one of those out of control matches I can remember seeing in the history of our Clearfield events. Nuts letting these fans take their shots. After uh, Team Big Rig has berated Clearfield time and time again, it's certainly coming their way. And this matchup is finally back in the ring. We need to have a referee out here. Come to think of it, there's no rules, there's no law. And it's Joseph Brooks, who now, Troy Davis finally gets into the ring. That bell signals the beginning of this matchup, if you can believe it. All that was extracurricular. Justin LaBar's made his way out here. He's in the face of Jimmy Nuts. And you know he's doing the bidding of John McChesney out of himself. LaBar, manager of the Super Indy champion, Mr. Sports Entertainment, RJ City. Almost had the IWC tight last week thanks to Luke Gallows. And now LaBar, Mike Town and I Jimmy Nuts wanted a piece of Justin LaBar, got distracted for a moment, allowed Joseph Brooks to take advantage of the situation. Jimmy Nuts. We said earlier you'd see a better Jimmy Nuts than you'd ever seen before. Jimmy Nuts is motivated by the excommunication of Team Big League. Nuts thought it was a brotherhood. He was being manipulated the whole time. As Brooks gets a near fall, Nuts and Al Snow should have had Brooks and John McChesney defeated a week ago in a new era. That is the return of the six foot. 275 pound Rex Lawless interrupted that situation. Cause T. Bigley to steal another win, but Jimmy Nuts still has fight left in him. Bradley threw it out of the way of Joseph Brooks. Down goes Brooks! The sky high bomb! That could do it now! What a big measure of retribution this could be for Jimmy Nuts if he's able to be victorious over his former tag team partner. These member tag team champions for many months. There's a reason why you are no longer in Jimmy There's a reason! Justin Labar inserting himself in this equation again. Jimmy Nuts has the bar! I mean, the bar practically faded. Wait, wait a second. Brooks, Brooks has a confetti gun. Both men badly. What is it? Brooks is dropping down. And, oh no. No, the official just caught. Just caught Jimmy Nuts with a gun. No! Not like this. 
Ladies and gentlemen, according to senior official Troy Davis, here is your winner as a result of a disqualification. Joseph Brooks. Oh, Team Big League did it again. Team Big League finds a way to stay a step ahead of Jimmy Knox. Wait a second. I don't think we're done here. If you're gonna disqualify Jimmy Nuts, well, Jimmy Nuts might as well give you a reason. is buried in his own trademark. Now, knockout forearm shot. Jimmy Nuts gets a measure of revenge, but didn't get what he came to clear field for. And that was Joseph Brooks out of the stick. Fires a warning shot, delivers a message. The Team Big League, Justin LaBar couldn't do a thing to stop Jimmy Nuts. And that pursuit of John McChesney and the rest of Team Big League continues for this young man who's found a wave of momentum now that he's on his own. Superstars 3, Tony Nese. Tony, we have maybe the antithesis to you because we have some very unorthodox athletes out here in this matchup, namely Corey Futuristic. Yeah, I mean, you know, this guy, I'm sure he's got, you know, all the skill to be a top athlete, but he's not the premier athlete. He's kind of a good thing. Is he? is one half the former IWC Tag Team Champion, Hot and Cute, along with, of course, Colin Delaney. Now this guy, this guy could be in a premier athlete uh, category himself right here. You guys look slightly different, though. You think? Get a little fresh with Ginger. Well, he has the background to prove it. He's held gold, very futuristic. Uh, not so much. He got roughed up earlier on by Marshall Bo Gambino, did Corey. Says he wants opportunity. Says Chuck Roberts doesn't give him opportunity. But he walks around telling people he's from the future. This guy's not that smart. If, if Corey Futuristic is from the future, then I'm a uh, stark proponent of V-Evolution. So you're saying he can, he can tra time travel? I'm not saying that. Maybe he should go back in time, tell himself to put a little calor couple calories in his diet. Maybe so. He's actually back in time now. He's from the future. He's from the future. He's in his future. So is... Is present glory? That is a very good question for you guys. Starts out with a slap and wants an opportunity. He slaps like a bitch. That's what you get. One thing about this kid, he's tough. He can take a beat. He doesn't know how to avoid a beat, but he can take a beat. Can't avoid that either. Interesting time you chose to join us, Mr. Nace. This is interesting, definitely. Interesting. <laughs> Not necessarily the style I'm used to. No. Take that on future. Right? Oh. Keith Hot loves to utilize the top 
from Splash. He calls the hot mess. All right. It's a I, cover. Actually, I've had my fair share of motorboats. No. It's very right, hot. Huh? I have to leave that way. Futuristic. Trips up hot. It just knocked itself into the garden. It shows you the momentum behind that. Appreciate him taking advantage of situations, but he's got to learn to capitalize. Futuristic was a member of the sexy, talented dude, the FTD. Being berated by fans right now. Well, uh, fans should enjoy your punch. You got a very impressive game, Prasad. And uh, very quickly, uh, Tony, I know you have had a lot of time to prepare and think about this, but what's your strategy going into uh, a two styles matchup and a superstar spring on IWC DVD? My strategy is just to be myself because I am the premier athlete. AJ Styles can be as phenomenal as he wants to be, but I am going to outdo everything he's got. Okay, AJ Styles, the, the advantage I have is he doesn't know how good I am, but I know how good he is. He's going to underestimate me. He's going to take advantage of all his mistakes, just like I took advantage of all of his mistakes. For going in a matchup with an athlete like twice his size. I think anyone in the locker room is twice his size. At least, yes. How do you feel about these sexy talented dudes? Do you have any interest in the Not necessarily. I like to kind of stay away from. Uh, from STD? Yeah. Side by side leg sweep, blow it over like that. Reverse chin lock. Focusing uh, with the Ramos and the mandible. That's something you never want to do when a guy is twice his size. Well, yeah, Corey Future just tried to ride him for, uh, for leverage. Now, Connects with a back cracker, and you can see the arch on the back of Keith Hawk. He got it on his knees as well, though. Absolutely. Corey for the cover, too, but no. Got a near fall there on a former tag team champion. Got to give credit there. On a man futuristic who's already been banged up earlier tonight. Take it to him. Take it to him. Trying to move the big man. That's a mistake. Backdrop counter. Sunset flip, but Keith Hawk, the bottom drops down. It's a visual. <laughs> Keith Hawk loves to dance, loves to jiggle, loves to have fun. Big fan of twerking. Big fan of twerking. Flipping a bionic elbow if you will, baby. And Keith Hawk exploding now with the Could be time for Keith Hart to finish this thing off. Let's see, for the music. Oh. High kick, roll up, roll up, Corey. Oh, hello. Near fall. Second time the charm with that high kick. See, he's got to hook those tights a lot earlier. Uh, no, I'd rather he not, actually. Hey, by any means necessary. Well, it worked for Tony Nese, but it worked for. Uh, I didn't pull any tights. No, you didn't. I think won by any means necessary, is my point. I won because I'm the premier athlete. The hot mess! Good night. Here's Keith. Keith Hot with some good news to take back to Colin Delaney. Keith Hot got rid of an STD. Defeats Corey Futuristic. Terry Clearfield. Tony Neese. Stick around. Main event. Still to come. Sorry, Fish, Dalton Castle, two men you know well for the IWC Championship. It's going to be a good one, I guarantee you. Senior
Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly have made one name for themselves as two times Ring of Honor World Tag Team Champions, but certainly uh, nothing compared to individual glory. And Bobby Fish with an opportunity tonight to capture a title that has eluded him. Bobby spent 2013 protecting the IWC Championship, keeping it on John McTenney for much of that time span. Fish can lead as IWC Champion before we go off the air. Begun. After a year plus long chase, Dalton Castle finally achieved his goal, defeating John McChesney, the IWC Championship at Winner Take All 2013. Dalton followed that up this past week with a hard fought victory, successful title defense over the director of chaos himself, Luke Gallo. Dalton, his schedule gets no easier as tonight he faces an individual with world class caliber credentials in Bobby Fish. Castle Fish, your feature for the championship. Let's not forget, Mr. Me, about Team Big League on the outside as well. Yeah, I mean, with or without Team Big League, my opinion, Bobby Fish has got the experience and I think he's got the skills to take this one. So I'm kind of going for Bobby Fish tonight. That's kind of my opinion. Bobby Fish, world traveled. Bobby Fish, uh, that's nice to bring your boyfriends to hang out. Very stern words for Castle during our intermission at the merchandise area. There were several tables separating both these men, but they were still jaw jacking the whole time. I simply don't understand. You're Mark Ryan. You get the same? All right, I can walk out of here. Win you any championships. Bobby Fish knows what he's doing here. He's playing mind games right now. Bobby, don't threaten these people by not allowing them to see me drop you on your head tonight. to signify that I'm ready to fight. No, it's because it's you're your choice show. to get in this ring. It's because you're a show. Not a lot of winners in this crowd. Our sport, some of our fans here in Philadelphia have been supporting us for 10 straight events. Uh, I didn't really feel any support when I came out today. show respect to Bobby Fish. Well, I don't think there'll be much support when AJ Styles comes to town either, but... Then you have having your whole life. Justin LaBar running his mouth once again, nothing new. Well, when there tends to be a, uh, an athlete like myself, like Bobby Fish that walks out, you, you seem to see uh, the jealousy leak out in this crowd. Uh, I noticed it when I came out and Bobby Fish is now doing a little bit. I think Bobby Fish is uh, playing it smart right now because Dalton Castle came out of House of Fire, and now he's kind of, now he's got a weight coming down right now. Bobby Fish is, is just kind of bringing his energy level down to where he wants it. So it's Bobby Fish controlling the tempo. Absolutely. That's what a season veteran does. I can't argue with that. I think it's a little bit, uh, uh, 
unfair on the part of Bobby Fish to expect these fans to live up to the athletic credentials of Bobby Fish. Well, maybe if these fans actually uh, found out where their local gym was, they could maybe make a difference in their life. But instead, we have hot dogs for two dollars here. Um, you know, pretty much just giving out hot dogs to this crowd. I really think that. Uh, you know, they should be giving out salads and stuff. This is a country, Tony. We can live our lives the way we want. We can eat food. We can not come. And look what happens. Look what happens when you do that. something that you usually refer to your cat in front of children. See, I'm from New York, where they banned supersized sodas because people just can't control what they put in their bodies. I think it's a bit. And I 100% condone that that rule, that law. I can do that. affect you. You're not supersizing sodas. I'm not. I haven't had a soda in 12 years. It's all about freedom and being happy. Yeah. Working class people. They don't work the same way you do, but they, they still work hard. They earn their living. They buy their ticket coming on like anybody else. And they'll spend it all on their hospital bills when they get older. I'm just, I'm just spitting the truth. It's like you may need a trip to the hospital up with the side of you. Oh, yeah, okay. First of all, facade. Tried cheating and cutting my head open. Cutting your head open. Thinking he, can, thinking he can get the match called, but see, I didn't let the referee call the match because I knew I'm a fighter. I'm an athlete. And I went in there and I beat him. Bobby Fish, not much of a fighter now. Dalton Castle taking the fight to Bobby Fish. Ah. Castle's ire was raised earlier tonight when all members of Team Bigley attempt to, to assault Jimmy Knox. Four on one, and check out Castle gonna fly. And that's not showing off, that's effective. I mean, Bobby just did have his back to him. It's Bobby Fish's fault, we've been out here five minutes. Bobby Fish seems to have been uh, uh, metaphorically in bed with Team Big League so far tonight, aligning himself with Long. Brooks and LeBar, but we've seen Fish and McChesney have some issues in recent months. We actually saw a uh, big time communication breakdown about Dick Madness this past one, summer. Two, and uh, Fish three, actually three, met McChesney one on one as chosen by Dalton Castle. Dalton was given permission to book McChesney's match that evening. He booked McChesney versus Fish back to Retro over here again. So there's been some, there's been some turmoil involving Team Big League, not just involving Jimmy Nuts. You gotta wonder how that reaction would be if John McChesney found out, hey, Bobby Fish has the IWC championship that used to be yours. That's just, that's just way, that's just the way it is. Bobby Fish assuming the field position a moment ago as strategy. And so it's a clean rope break. Don Castle has to abide by the rules. And he did. But Bobby Fish also has to abide by the rules by competing inside the ring. I think Fish realizes that he's exploiting it to its fullest. But this time they're going to have a curfew at this point. Bobby Fish will take all night. Dalton Castle wants to fight two good players. I know you see some of that fight. It took Dalton back off there, man. That's a real play. That's a real play. Took Dalton over 15 months of chasing his championship to finally win. Uh, you can understand how eager Dalton is to prove what a fighting champion is going to be, what a great representative the International Wrestling Cartel Dalton will be. How do you know? Do you like it, Rob? I use the wrestle. That's how I know. No question that if you can defeat AJ Styles if for a former two-time super champion in his own right, multiple-time world champion as well. I don't think anyone can argue with that point. 
Your credentials as Dalton explodes with a clothesline. Second time. And Dalton showing that wrestling prowess. Sometimes you forget how good Dalton is because he's so unorthodox, so charismatic. And Dalton among the absolute best. Referee, I mean, he has his hands on his hair and everything. He's letting a little too much go here. Same guy that refereed my match almost cost me the match with the side. Yeah. Match, I guess, but luckily I was good enough to just, you know, fight on my own there. I didn't I didn't need the referee's rules or I've never seen a, a, an athlete choice at such a caliber take this many timeouts. This they can do whatever they want. They're smart. Athletes are also smart people. They're not just fit people. I'm not denying that. Certainly there were a number of occasions earlier when you outsmarted the side when you were taking a And Dalton. You can see the, the effects of Bobby Fish's uh, waiting game. And uh, Dalton, at this rate, may make a mistake, and then Bobby Fish uh, could dictate the advantage from there. Yeah, but now he's getting that in the advantage. Oh, give me the, give me the chair, Bobby. What's Usyk 
Wednesday, Dalton's got a chair. Bobby Fish, I believe, has a chair. Stakes are being raised here at Clearfield. Completely lost control of this championship match. Bobby <coughs> Fish trying to end this matchup. That's stupid. Not gonna win the title that way. LeBar and Lawless are out of here. And to your point, Mr. Meese, how exactly is Dalton Castle being given an advantage? It's one on one. Well, now, now Bobby Fish's head is all over the place. I mean, they just kicked his, his support group out, out of the building. They were doing a lot more than support. Now Bobby Fish. Chris Lawless was simply just trying to grab on the apron to let the ref know he needs to do a better job. It wasn't, it wasn't his fault Dalton Castle having to hit the ropes at the exact same time. That's just bad timing. Pure coincidence and happenstance. Victim of circumstance. And Bobby Fish now takes over. In spite of what we've seen here so far this evening. It's a cradle castle with a cradle or two. Bobby Fish ability wise will make an excellent IWC champion. Do you agree? Absolutely. He would make a great opponent for me to beat. Yes. Uh, and I don't see against Raymond Rowe. Raymond Rowe's made his way to ring around on television as well in recent months. This star from his garage, and I don't see Reginald. He officially traded matchups. Chris gets two count there on the IWC champion. Less than a second away from history being made here in Clearfield, Pennsylvania. Very straightforward. You don't want to get in the way of Bobby Fish's lethal kicks, I'll tell you that. So to get a strategy, if you were in the ring, how you would be either one? Yeah, I would put both their shoulders to the mat for a three-second count. Ten minutes on the this contest, ten minutes. So he's not allowing us into his uh, strategy, but you can see. Keep your neck closed, just like for AJ Styles, I assume. I was telling you to do the beat there. I understood the end result. I was you're right though, you're right though, there are other options. I could apply enough pressure on a hold where they would give up. Master the obvious. Well, I don't, uh, I don't, uh, uh, the fact that you have to keep your cards close to your vest a uh, month before the most important matchup in your career, arguably. But uh, AJ Styles, uh, can adapt to any situation, any style. AJ has been in every type of matchup that one can be in. And hopefully we're ready for a war. Hopefully you have a better plan than Bobby Fish exploited earlier on if you hope to beat the most phenomenal athlete in this world. You know what? To be honest, you know, AJ Styles is probably one of the best that's ever stepped in the ring. But like I stated before, I have the advantage. I grew up watching AJ Styles. When I broke into his business, he was at the top of his game. Let's look for a moment. I know what he has. Let's focus for a back into the ring, not to cut you off, but you can see Dalton Castle trying to fight his way back to a vertical base, but again, those lethal kicks of Bobby Fish you talked about a moment ago. Just nodding up that final, chopping Dalton Castle down. I told you this was all a part of Bobby Fish's plan. He knew what he was doing from the start. He knows how to wear someone down. Don't try to psych himself up here. Trying to create some distance for himself. And Don't can open this matchup a little bit more. I think uh, the Heat Cock will have the advantage. Don't get that head of steam he's looking for. The back elbow connects. And Don't doesn't have full use of that leg. He's, he's weak, but he's wobbling, but he's, he's taking care of business. Himself on the truck kick. It's impressive with the knee condition that he's right now dealing with. Now you see that heart of a champion. You see that drive that's real. It's real Dalton Castle to this point. He's trapped. Spinning out with the modifier. 
Unified Sidewalk Slam. This could do it. Don't not top do it now. Tony, you've been in that position many times. You think you have this matchup for the way. Just the last second, you just gotta pull it to five if you don't want to do it. It's unfortunate when the ref got too slow, but sometimes you just gotta keep on pressing on. That's right. For the ride. Oh! And Fish just, just takes away that vertical base, just wrenches down that arm and shoulder. That's the lands. Man, man, it takes off. He's working the leg now, he's getting on the arm here, he's letting, taking away whatever offense Dalton Cassidy kind of has in his arsenal there. One piece at a time, chopping him down. A step ahead of Dalton. Two words. And Dalton, oh my god, what power! Bobby Fish caught it mid and elevated! That could do it. Still the champion, no. And again, the shock and awe on the face of Dalton Castle. Thought this would have done it, but not to be in this exchange. Do it again. Barely able to stand as they trade shots. Legs under you, you can't get the full force of one like that. You guys fight for whatever they can muster internally. Get burned! It's Fish caught! Went to charge in, sunset, flip, fish, shoulders down. Just continues to fight in that high round kick connects. Uh, right around the clavicle. Fish knows that now. Fish up in the lights. Diving headbutt nicely on. And that could do it. New champion back to Team Big Big Dog. Come on. 15 minutes gone by in this contest. 15 minutes. We are seeing a two to a true test of uh, endurance between these two athletes. They both knew what they were in for here. It's really going to come down to now who, who's going to be the most persistent, who's going to last longer than the other man. Absolutely. And you see Fish continues to, to cut away Dalton's ability to stand. Dalton counters. Fish goes face first. There's the, the deadlift. German. Shoulders down. Bridge. Dalton retains. Big time victory! The era of the Peacock continues. Dalton Castle, victorious, but Anthony he certainly earned it. Yeah, he definitely earned that one. I'll give him that one, man. I didn't think he had that in him. I think Bobby Fish had the power in those kicks to beat him, but Dalton Castle just knew when to take advantage. So I'll give him that one. He definitely, uh, definitely earned his stripes tonight. Dalton Castle continues to prove he is a great champion, and it's a short amount of time. Castle has risen to the occasion, and all roads turn ahead from here first for a live event. It'll be Uncivil War in White Oak, Pennsylvania, March 22nd. That'll be our next DVD release, and then that will be followed, of course, by the Night of Superstars, which is David Hart Smith, Brett the Hitman Hart, the Steiner Brothers, Matt Stryker, Mickey James, and of course, the main event, one of the main events, Tony Nese, one on one with the phenomenal AJ Styles. Tony, any parting words? You know what? That day can't come soon enough, but I'm already ready now. I'm just going to keep preparing, keep preparing, keep preparing, and April 12th, we're going to find out who the real athlete and who the real phenomenal one really is. And at both those events, Dalton Castle will defend the IWC Championship and perhaps many, many more into the future. We'll see you next time here at IWC DVD. Thanks for joining us.